Then a very important question is question number 11 where it says a need to revise our audit plan. If there was something you came across or you didn't get enough evidence during your audit work, whatever the case may be, and there is a need to revise the plan, you do not need to go all the way back to the planning section and go and fix stuff there. It's very simple. You can write here from the work program, you say, yes, there is a need to revise our audit plan. It will then automatically give you a comment box to explain why you need to revise your audit plan. For instance, not enough evidence was gathered regarding the valuation assertion. Right. Um, it then also pops up with another question, question 12, which asks, is there a need to revise our overall or specific materiality assessment? If you, for instance, if you were doing revenue and possibly you had to pass a lot of um, journal adjustments to revenue and that's what your materiality figure was based on, possibly you would need to then also revise your materiality. Right. Um, <clears throat> so if there was a need to revise our materiality because it's not a fixed thing at the planning stage, it's not set in stone once you have calculated your materiality figure, you can go and revise it as the audit pro progresses and you should if there is a problem or circumstances warrant it. So if you say yes, there is a need to revise your materiality figure, it will again pop up with a comment box in the work program. It then also enables you to change either the overall materiality or performance or specific. Right, how you do it is if for instance your overall materiality needed to be changed, you then click on that little revised box and you type in whatever you wanted, you now changing it to. It again pops up with a comment box, not just for show, for you to explain why you have now revised it to that figure. Right, so you're basically your thought process. If you, however, do change the overall materiality figure, it does not automatically recalculate the performance materiality figure. So you would then need to go and calculate that and type it in here once again. Right. Obviously, if you change your overall materiality, it is going to affect the whole file. If you change your performance materiality, again, same effect, it is going to affect the whole file. If you change your specific materiality, that will, of course, affect this section only, right? But in all three of the cases, you would then need to go and do the step D, and step D says, determine whether the nature, timing, and extent of our audit procedures still remain appropriate, right? You don't have to revise your materiality figure. You can say, no, there was no reason to revise our materiality figure. If you just, for instance, needed to go and do more work and gain more audit evidence regarding the assertions, right? When I said yes to a need to revise our audit plan, this little block also pops up with lists. I'm sure you're all familiar with those items on the left, listed on the left. That's the different tabs we can put into our work programs. And you can now go and switch those tabs on and provide yourself with more procedures. So for instance, if you wanted to do more extended tests of detail, instead of just required procedures because you didn't get enough done, you would then click on the little block under the revised column. It then gives you a warning saying procedures were added to the audit program. If you say OK, you can also see at the top it has added that tab for me. You go to that tab. You do those steps or customize the steps, whatever you feel is necessary to gain your audit evidence, right? You can then also see the difference between what was planned in the column on the left. It'll show you what you did at the planning stage, what route you decided to take. And the second column, the revised column, will tell you what you've now done. Obviously, the reason box is there for you to explain why have you now selected to do additional testing, Possibly it's also going to be another reason you are doing additional testing and why you chose specifically the testing, right? If you untick it because you decided it wasn't necessary, it again will pop up with a, re uh, a warning which will say procedures were removed from the audit program. If you say OK, you can see my tab has now disappeared. Right. The next thing you can also do if there was a need to revise the audit plan 
is revise your risk assessment. I'm not going to go through this. Then we get down to this part where everyone seems to struggle just a little bit, especially those clocks and the new clocks, they struggle a little bit to do this part. Right, I'm just going to take away my additional blocks. Right, so here by this conclusion part, this is where a lot of people often struggle with what needs to be put in there. If you had done, for instance, you shouldn't be concluding on this tab, on the last conclusion tab, in terms of here where it says required procedures. What should happen is you should be going to the required procedures tab and concluding on the steps you have performed on this tab, you conclude down at the bottom. Right. You conclude about what type of assurance you've obtained. It then pulls through to the last tab, the conclusion tab, and that's why you shouldn't be concluding on this tab. For instance, if you didn't test completeness on one of the previous tabs, you don't conclude on completeness on that tab. And that's why it's better to conclude everything and let everything pull through to here, because when you're just looking at this screen, you can't see those steps that were tested on the previous tabs and you don't know that you haven't tested completeness and then you're going to incorrectly conclude on completeness when on that previous tab you hadn't actually done a step regarding completeness. Right. So how you do it is, and it comes down to those principles of audit evidence, that sufficiency and how appropriate was our audit evidence. And when we conclude here, a lot of the clerks just like to say hi, hi, hi because that gets us to where we want to go. Right, but that's not how it works. How it actually works is you should be assessing how much assurance you got. It's exactly what it says to you, assurance obtained. So you need to assess how much evidence did you get and how appropriate was it. Right, and we've all learned in our studies about that wonderful stuff, external being better than internal. What was the source of our evidence? Did the client give it to us? Did we go and get that evidence ourselves, for instance, by doing an external confirmation. And the strength of the evidence also comes into play here. And that's what you need to assess. So, for instance, if I'm doing salaries and I need to verify um, that all of the employees exist, I would, for example, I could either go and look in the personnel files and go and examine IDs or signed contracts and verify that they are actual employees of the company in that way. But possibly a better procedure would be to go and say hello to all of those employees and ask them for their birth date, right? Because then you can actually see them and there's less chance of them saying, hi, I'm Sally, when actually it's Jane, right? Because they have to know the birth date, which will be the beginning of their ID number. So possibly, for example, if I had only looked in the personnel files, I might say I got medium assurance, right? And if I had perhaps gone and said hello to all the employees and verified that they do exist in that way, maybe I would say I got high assurance. So it does depend and it is a judgment call. Please don't just go ahead and put high there so you can get round to your conclusion, right? Then when you do put in whatever type of assurance you have obtained. Again, you would do this on the required procedures tab. You wouldn't be concluding here. What happens in Probe is it automatically will calculate for you the estimated um, audit risk remaining. It does not automatically populate that block because Probe does not have professional judgments and you do. To accept Probe's um, estimates of the audit risk remaining, you can double click on the little block and it will show you how much it thinks you've got remaining. If you don't agree with Probe's estimate, you can type in there whatever you think is remaining. Right. And then what you do is you assess is this audit risk remaining, did we get to our desired audit risk? So very low is the same as the very low here, desired audit risk. So yes, you got there perhaps on the existence and occurrence assertions. But on the other assertions, for instance, if it says low here and you had desired audit risk of very low, you haven't gotten there yet, right? You got lost along the way, you didn't get enough evidence, then possibly you would go back up to this question 11 and that's when you would possibly revise your audit plan, right? And go and do more procedures, maybe get more evidence and try to get this down to 
very low or possibly minimum. Right, once you have gotten to very low or a little bit past something a little bit better, you go and you then conclude and you can say it was satisfactory if you did get there. If you didn't get there and you went and you did more audit work and you've exhausted every avenue you possibly could, you've done as much work as you possibly could, right, you very rarely would put there that it's unsatisfactory, there was nothing more that you could possibly do to get any more evidence regarding, for instance, com um, completion, right, completeness. So if you say unsatisfactory, you'll also notice, please just take note, here on the left, I have a little footnote 5 that's also a premium function. It has instructions down at the bottom of the work program. And please just take note what happens next to that number 5 when I say unsatisfactory. Right, it pops up with the number 6. And number 6 says to us, please go and report to the engagement partner where unsatisfactory audit evidence was obtained. Because we can't just leave it on the audit program hoping someone's going to eventually pick it up, right? Someone has to be aware and it all ties into that whole communication between the audit team, right? If everything was okay, you can say satisfactory and it'll automatically sign off. There's also a little comment box for you to add in any additional information when you conclude on your work program. Right, so that's my whole presentation I'm doing for today.